Do I need to We'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth. The one and only Mark Reuter, Baltimore Brew. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Donnie. Good. First, I must pay homage to you for the great uh, political coverage during this last mayoral citywide election uh, season. Uh, you put some great information out there, you and uh, your, your team, and uh, we just, just have to commend you because you, you are certainly a leader in the realm of journalism, particularly as it relates to people who love, love Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you. So what's this all about? Where, where are we today? I didn't even know this place was here. Well, see, this is uh, this was opened a, a few months ago, I guess. It's called Liam Flynn's on 22 West North Avenue. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's a really cool kind of double-sized row house. Mm -hmm. The proprietor is also a, a carpenter, so he did a lot of the work here. It has uh, tons of beer, all different types. 22 West North Avenue. We are right here on the Strip. Yeah, we're on the Strip, and we're next to the wind-up, which has, you know, become a pretty hip place. Um, Mickey so, D's across the street. That's the landmark there, everybody. Knows. Yeah, and so this is part, I think, of the revival of this area, which is great to have these quality places. We're here because we're also, um, the brew's been around for three years. Congratulations, big brother. Thank you. We've done a lot of this for Chen and myself as a labor of love. Um, as you as you well know, it's a, it's a reporter's website. We, we spend our time calling through records, going to City Hall, going into the communities. We've done a lot of good stories. We have a lot more that we could do. So we're kicking off this week a fundraiser. In fact, it's going to be called a Kickstarter campaign. It's an internet campaign. We'll be putting the information on the BaltimoreBrew.com website. We're going to try to reach a um, predetermined level and then exceed it. And the idea is, is you know, get what you can then be involved in real citizen journalism and helping what we're trying to do, which is to bring a real look into City Hall, into City Hall contractings to do um, uh, spot on reporting of neighborhoods. And that's been our motivation um, now. And we've gotten a, uh, we get a lot of audience and, um, you know, that's given us a lot of, um, of strength. But a little bit of money would, as with all of us, would help a little to, um, to expand. We want to go into education, um, do a little more on nightlife and stuff. Um, and all of this would, you know, would, would bring more stuff to our readers. What have been uh, your top stories this year, 2011? Well, we've been continuing to cover the saga, almost the perils of Pauline, of the biggest industrial plant remaining in the Baltimore area, which is the Sparrows Point Steel Mill. We've covered broken stories throughout it all on the change of ownership, the uh, union contract, which had a lot of givebacks, uh, most recently, we broke the stories um, of some big setbacks by the new owners. One was a blast in the blast furnace as it was starting up that injured two workers badly. We broke that story. Uh, last week, there was a bad fire in the tin mill. We broke that story, and then we came back through the help of the many steel workers who subscribed to us to report, and this really um, has caused attention that there was a, it was a bad um, fire started with chemicals and oil, a nasty, nasty fire. No fire hydrants were working in the entire area. And we confirmed that, um, the fire department finally confirmed that. So that's one big story. The mayoral election, we've been doing a lot, as you know, on the campaign contributions. The what, what, what did you find out? We found out that the incumbents uh, in City Hall get huge amounts of money, uh, sometimes uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, many times more than the um, the limit is supposed to be from contractors working for the city. That might not be news or what people suspect, but we've documented the ones doing it. The campaign laws in Maryland say that a company and an individual should only can only contribute four thousand per election cycle. We documented how, for example, David Cordish, the developer, the uh, Grant Capital Services, they're donating it to the Rollins-Blake campaign alone 
twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars. There was so a. So where's the special prosecutor on this? Um, I don't know. Um, but what I we mean, isn't this the type of thing that the state prosecutor has been going after for the past several years? It, it has been, and I think that you know what we're committed to is you know the First Amendment, the, the free press that that covers this. We've been covering and gotten a, a big. Um, uh, feedback positive from readers the city hall contracts now we we go through that and look through those the um the sun papers have sort of stopped doing that years ago and um so that's another one let, let, me, let me ask you about this this is a story that's uh, that's going on as we speak occupy baltimore exactly we've been breaking a lot of stories on that when it first came um fern shen's been doing most of it we had a nice story this morning on a uh, sidelight of that of some students who uh, occupied a, um, uh, a vacant lot by Barnes and Noble at 33rd and St. Paul that Hopkins has owned for years and we we're going to build condos it failed it's just a, uh, a fenced off area they liberated it yesterday uh, we just heard that yesterday there's being Sunday October the 9, 9. 9. Okay. That's our more serious side, but we also do portraits of, of interesting artists like the, um, the artist who does the glasswork, uh, Lauren Cornish, We've done a lot of work on him. Um, and uh, we, have a, we do good food columns. We do- Oh yeah, give, give me a good restaurant in Baltimore. Well, we would need Francine um, Halverson, who's the one who does that. I think she likes the black olive a lot in, in Fells Point. That's okay. that's one. The black olive has excellent food. Aha! I okay. should ask you, Donnie. Uh, great <laughs> food, fresh seafood, top of the line. Right. Uh, I do know that there were some community challenges. I think back during the summer, but uh, you know, I, I've given a fundraiser there before. Beautiful excellent. place. Just Good. before I went off to Africa. Uh -huh. So you, you won't catch me talking smack about them. No. We also, and um, Francine did it, wrote about the, um, the new food vendors that are coming into town with new stuff. Uh, they got snagged into all sorts of um, bureaucratic red tape, which we wrote about, and I would say we're instrumental in helping de-snag those vendors from some of the red tape. Okay, okay. So uh, introduce us to Fern. Let's, let's, let's get her take on this. Okay. I know she's hosting. Fern, you're the host, but uh, hi. How you doing? What's your name? I'm doing great. I'm Fern Shen. Fern I'm, uh, Shen, the editor of the Baltimore Brew. I'm so thrilled to be in a you know Donnie production. Wow! <laughs> Tell us about the brew from your perspective. What's what's uh, the significance of it? The brew has been just kicking it. We've been doing great stuff, and we really feel like we are very much needed in the city. We are doing accountability journalism. We are city hall. questioning the status quo. We are looking at City Hall and trying to dig deep into um, spending, into campaign finance, and into just kind of the philosophy of how to revive the city. A lot of people are questioning it, and uh, that became very apparent during the election, and we were kind of a home for people to talk about it. So we felt like we were a good forum. Poor voter turnout. Any observations? Uh, why do you think there was a, a small, such a small turnout? I think people are just very discouraged, and um, it's a kind of a vicious cycle. I'm, I met a lot of first-time no vote voters. Yeah. People for the, who, for the first time in their adult lives, did not vote. Yeah. Well, they, you know, with some reason, feel like uh, you know, the incumbents sort of have the edge. There is no way that um, you know they can be unseated. That the campaign finance laws are you know have truck-sized loopholes in them, and uh, they get discouraged. And so uh, you know we're hoping by shining a little light on the uh, and you tell and, and, and we're trying to teach the kids about no bullying. Teaching the kids about no bullying. Well, yeah. Well, I hope the, the well, it's, adults it's, can set a good example. Well, well not from what I'm hearing from you. Ain't coming advantage. <laughs> Anyway, any other thoughts that you want to share with the, you know, with the Be More News audience about oh. the Baltimore Brew? Well, and, and we admire your work. I've learned so much in reading your columns, and, and you've got some humor in there too. If it, <laughs> I'm always entertained, educated, and entertained. You gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. Uh, you know, come to us with your ideas. We want to hear about what's going on in your neighborhood. If you feel like you've been kind of neglected. 
come track us down and uh, take a look at our Kickstarter campaign because we're trying to raise a little fund, funding to uh, you know, keep, keep doing going. this, keep it going. And Donnie, uh, thanks to you for uh, getting people in front of your video camera. I always enjoy seeing that. Bless know. the Lord. Thank you for all you do. Thanks. How can people get in touch? It's BaltimoreBrew.com. BaltimoreBrew.com. And you can email me at Fern.Shen, F-E-R-N dot S-H-E-N at BaltimoreBrew.com. Thank you so much. Thanks. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth. <laughs>